live from Columbus, it's Saturday night. Hey everyone, how you doing today? I am Patrick, your co-host, and you all know my other co-host, Mr. Chile. Hey y'all, what's going on? And as always, we got over here Mr. Producer Jerome Barrow. How you doing, Jerry? I'm doing good. What's up, everybody? Oh, what a fun time to be on the air. We just had a uh, really wonderful meal. Amazing meal. Home-cooked awesome. meal. A uh, couple of uh, vegetables. Now I'm just worried Let's about... Let's not talk about Melissa and Eric. <laughs> Let's not call them vegetables. I mean, come on. That's rude. I'm just worried now about, like, how do I keep from... Uh, you know, enjoy my uh, food round right. two, right? Food coma, exactly. <laughs> uh, exactly. Well, the five hour helps with the food coma. It does a little bit. It does a little bit. And then it, my water helps with the food coma, too. Yeah, absolutely. No, I agree. I completely agree. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Outer Belt Podcast. This is our live edition on Saturday night. What a great, what a great introduction, Melissa. Oh, yeah. That was awesome. Was that was awesome. I, I love it. And uh, oh, man, the chat is hot. Hot tonight. We got a lot of people Hot. talking already. Already, uh, a couple of people saying Happy Mother's Day. That's right, Happy Mother's Day to everybody. Tomorrow morning, uh, if you haven't or if you forgot to reach out to your mom, do it. It's not too late. I mean, it's tomorrow, so that's right. I'm just saying, a reminder, time. reminder. Right? Unless they're watching this in the future, like next Saturday, you, then it's too late. It's too late. It, yeah. Then you just do like the. Uh, belated Mother's Day, right? Right, exactly. The yeah. belated Mother's Day, but, and apologize profusely. Absolutely, uh, but. I mean, come on. Hey, at some point, you got to do what you got to do, right? Right. So yeah. it's better yet if you if you still have time, reach out and say hi to mom. Definitely. Uh, you know, Dana Lord uh, just posted in the chat. Twelve people watching and only four likes. We can do better. Jerry, what do we have to do to make that better? Uh, we need people just to smash that like button. Come on, smash you're it. Up, you're up to seven already. Smash it. Smash. I'm gonna. How do I do that? Oh, it's the thumbs up. Close right? out the chat. Hit the thumbs up. And then bring the chat back if you're on YouTube. Awesome. Well, uh, let's see. Who all's in the chat? Speaking of which. Uh, well, we talked about Deb and Dana Lord already. Hey, Deb uh, and Deb's Dana. in there as well. Um, Plant Traced. I believe that's Traced out of uh, Dallas, Fort Worth area. Well, it is a howdy, so you're close. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I met Melissa and I met Trace um, a couple years ago now, it seems like. Uh, we oh. We had... Um, had dinner with Trace and uh, yeah, I see that. Our, his wife and we daughter. See that? Yeah. yeah. Hold yeah. on one second. Uh, we're gonna do a little in-house. Una momento, por favor. Por favor. I'll keep talking. Yeah, keep talking yeah, amongst you talking and Jerry. Talk the, the uh, crowd while we try to get this audio thing fixed up. Does um, anybody else really, out there? I just have issues, or that was my fault. That, that was my fault. That part, but. <laughs> Anybody else having issues other than Dana Lord? I'm sorry, other than Trace. Okay, so we're going to keep talking and while Patrick tries to, to fix that, figure out what's going on here. So, uh, Raylene, welcome in. Um, I think we, answer, we answered a question for Raylene uh, a few episodes back. Hopefully you got the answer you're looking for, Raylene. If not, please let us know and we'll try and, uh, and um, talk about that again some more here. Um, Oh, I just lost my feed. That's weird. There we go. Um, business drivers. That's our friend Donna Sleesman. She likes to join us and give us crap. Uh, hey, hey Donna, Donna. Good to see you. Welcome in. How are we doing over there? I'm. I, you know, everything on my end checks out. Are we still cutting in and out on the audio? Is anybody else noticing that as well? If you could please reach out and let us know. We appreciate that. We're trying to produce... A world class, amazing um, podcast on that'll a make shoestring budget. on a shoestring budget. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Unless you're watching this and you're in podcasting, and then you're looking at our microphones and going like, "This doesn't look shoestring." <laughs> that's that looks, not very much of a shoestring. That's more. If it is, it's a nice. Yeah. It's a nice shoestring, like a Nike. Yeah, a Nike, like LeBron or something. I don't even know if they. I call don't know about LeBron. Days, but I thought they uh, were Jordans. Jordans, yeah. We just got a thumbs up from Raylene, and we got a thumbs up from Donna. All right, cool deal. Sweet. Thank y'all so Sweet. much for uh, <laughs> helping us with that. We uh, we try. Yeah, we do. We try. Yeah. Not very hard sometimes, but we try. Especially when we had. 
dinner right before we, we did. We had a great dinner <laughs> right, right before. Yeah. Uh, anyways, so uh, Texas Roadhouse was a good time. Wait, when, when, who went to Texas Roadhouse? We went to Texas Roadhouse with Trace, oh. Buttermilk and I, and uh, another team, and uh, John Duff. Oh, cool. Yeah. Was that here? No, this was down in, in Tex- Terrell, Texas. Oh, okay. With uh, We went with Trace and his wife and daughter. Um, had a great time with him. Had a great time. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I uh, have been doing that lately, getting a chance to go re- reach out and see people, and it's been uh, very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, fulfilling? I don't know. It's just been fun hanging yeah. out with people. It's been great. Uh, you know, you kind of got, in, or at least I did, got into like a little bit of a uh, normal of not seeing people and just spending time at home. and. Right. Um, only going out when we absolutely had to kind of thing. And it is nice to be back in that uh, place of being able to m- mingle and enjoy each other's company and all that stuff again. I tell you what, I was just, huh. uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, we'll get back. Right, we'll, we'll get that a little bit. That. Okay, right. there's more to, right. more to come. Uh, Billy. Billy just jumped in. Hey, Billy, how's it going? What's up? I got to see him this uh, yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah, and I got yeah. I got to, I got to fall on the sword here. I really royally screwed up. Please do. So if I can just go back a little bit to yesterday, uh, we go down to ELW, which is a shop that we use here quite a bit, um, and we walk into the office, and Billy- Who's we? We, myself, Patrick, and Melissa Lee. Okay. Walk into the office to drop a couple of trucks off and- let them know what's going on. And um, Billy and his teammate Josh are in the office. And I recognize them. I'm talking to them immediately because I, I did their their orientation um, back when they moved in. And um <clears throat> didn't even occur to me to introduce you and Mel to Billy and Josh until we were been standing there for five minutes after I talked to Billy and Josh and caught up with them. And I turned around talking to, to Sarah, who works there at EOW, and realize I didn't even say, hey, Patrick, Melissa, huh. meet Billy and Josh. Yeah. They drive with us. Didn't even cry. I did. Well, I did ultimately did do that. Do yes. that uh, but it was, uh, I'm still embarrassed by that today. So Billy, uh, Josh, I certainly apologize for that. Well, and it was funny too. I thought being from my perspective of, um, I didn't meet these people upon entry. We've talked on the live before. Right. And uh, so I have a little bit of communication with him, but I, I didn't know his face. Sure. And sure. Uh, that shop is one of the kind of places where you could meet someone on Wednesday and talk with them, and then on Friday or Thursday you see them again, and then Friday you see them again. And so you could have had a rapport with just oh, sure. a random truck a random that was truck there, yeah. and, and that was Certainly. cool. So I didn't really give it Certainly. a whole lot of thought. It was actually Melissa. Melissa was the one that uh, talked about it being uh, like, hey, who are these people or what have you? And, and, and um, so it was a little bit of a... A little bit of mud on the face, but it was great to meet him. Got a chance to talk to him uh, for a while. Uh, my uh, vehicle that I went there to pick up ended up not being able to leave. Um, I found another issue with it they were able to, they're going to work on. Um, but he gave me plenty of time to hang out and be able to chat for a while. Uh, and that was, uh, that was really good. They got some exciting stuff they're working on that yeah. I'm looking forward to uh, mm-hmm. working with them some more. It might even be, you know, none of those people that's be fun to get on the podcast because they, they seem like really oh, cool yeah. people. They really are. So if you, if you're hearing me, uh, we're, we're looking at you. Looking so, at you, Billy. That's Josh. right. That's right. Um, but anyways, it's uh, it's been a really fun time. You said Donna's in the house? Oh, there she is. Yeah, hey, Donna. Uh, got to talk to her for a little bit, but uh, not a lot lately. But we, we did get to communicate a couple days ago. Uh, she's great. I, I love working with Donna. Um, her and I are kind of working on a project together right now that I can't give a whole lot of details about. Mm, uh, just interesting. Not, 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 no, let me, how do, let me back yeah, myself out no, of this for a little exactly. bit. Exactly. Not a, uh, not any kind of commingling, just some uh, ideas we're bouncing around. But it's, uh, she's a great person. She's got a great fleet over at Landstar and at FedEx. And uh, yeah, she's, uh, how do I put this nicely? She, we need to have her on that podcast. We should. She's been doing this longer than Jerry has. Wow. Which is, I mean, there's just not a whole lot of people left. Jerry's been doing this for like 35 years. He has. He's long time. Long time. 35? Yeah. That's all? No, been, not 35. I made it 14 years and two months. 14 you Couldn't make it the last 10 months. Right. I yeah. mean, you were practically there. there. <laughs> I was done. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's, that's a recent. long time. Yes. It's Donna, a long we, time. Yeah, and Donna, we do need to talk soon. It has... Uh, it's so easy not to know who you've been introduced to. Yeah, sorry, absolutely. Um, so, cool. Well, 
Uh, if more people jump in, we'll we'll shout out. Uh, as usual, we're going to do our normal thing. If anybody pops in, they want to say hi, uh, and they want to um, talk to us, or if they have any questions or comments or whatever, we will catch up with that a little bit later on the episode. Yeah. But first, we're going to try and give you a show. We're going to try and entertain you for a couple minutes. Uh, that's such a weird phrase, isn't it? It truly is. I mean... It truly is. I just, but that's what we're going to do. You ever feel like Pinocchio? I think about the uh, the, the Backstreet Boys had that... Um, it was it was that NSYNC? Who had the... Uh, was it NSYNC? NSYNC that, with NSYNC the arms. With the arms. Oh, yeah. I'm like, we're going to try yeah. to entertain you for a few minutes. <laughs> uh, it's... Uh, I don't know. We're going to try to have a little fun here. We do have a couple things to talk about. And uh, so I'm going to jump off the chat. So if you are now on the chat, I don't see your chats anymore. But that's fine because... We have moderators, and yes, those moderators do. today are going to be uh, Eric and Melissa. Give us a wave. If you're on the chat, say hi, Eric and Melissa. If you're watching us on Facebook, we're on there. If you're watching us on YouTube, we are there as well. Uh, if you're listening to the podcast, the podcast is not live, uh, unfortunately. So keep up with when we're going to be going live, and you'll be able to uh, chat back with us and talk with us as well. So um, can we Can we try something here again? I didn't close out my window, and I, I happened to see Melissa and Eric on screen, and their enthusiasm is not horrible. Well, horrible. You have to understand, they work for competing podcasts. I get it. So they're trying to bring I us down. It. But if they could be a little more energetic with their waves and hellos. <laughs> All I right. Mean, come hey, on. Let's, let's try that one more time. Come on, we can do that. Please. We can do that some more. That's right. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so cool, we got it. Um, well, uh, real quick, just want to talk about how has uh, the week been? The week is over. I've had a, a crazy week <laughs> that I want to share a couple things about with. But, uh, Chili, how has it been uh, this week? This week's been been a good week. Um, Melissa and I were out last weekend, and uh, so I was out Monday came back Tuesday and realized that we had actually gotten pretty well ahead of, of, of the curve on what we need to do. Uh, so we were able to take care of some smaller stuff that kind of doesn't affect the day-to-day um, truck operation side, but yeah. affects us on the backside, organizing storage, going, doing a trash run. Uh, so we were able to take care of a lot of that stuff this week, as long as well as picking up trucks from shops and making sure they're ready to go. So uh, it's it's been a... Um, not a quiet week per se, but not a crazy busy. It sounds productive. Week. It was a very productive week. We actually got some stuff taken care of that kind of takes the back seat to getting the trucks ready to go. But that it all, but it takes a back seat to getting trucks ready to go. Yeah. But it makes when we have those trucks in the yard, it makes them getting them ready easier because we're more, more organized. So absolutely, it was a good week. I know when I was there the other day, the trash uh, situation was um, a horrible. It was getting overflowing. I, I believe out of control. And there's, there was two reasons for that. One was the weather. Oh, yeah. When it rains, we can't take the, the Sprinter van to the landfill when it rains because we'll get stuck. Well, I don't think people know either. When we do our trash runs, we're literally bringing our van. It's a right. cargo it's van, a, big yeah, whatever. Sprinter van, yeah. And we take it. We literally drive up the landfill. Yes. I call it the Columbus Mountain. Yes. The, uh, Columbus the mountains Mountain. of Columbus. Right. Yeah. You uh, literally drive it up there, and it's all dirt. Dirt. Which all means dirt. when it rains, it's all, it's all mud. mud. Yeah. And it's a two-wheel drive Sprinter van. With city tires, yes, and yes, that's, it, it's, it's it rides nice, just not in the mud, just not in the mud uphill. Yeah. The other issue we had was the Sprinter van was in the shop for new brakes. Oh, that's right, we did get new brakes. So that. as soon as we got it back and the weather cleared up, we made that run. So I think you were there Tuesday. We made the run Wednesday, yeah. or maybe maybe it was you were there Tuesday morning. Anyway, we made the trash run and cleared out a bunch of space. We were able to move stuff around, actually move around, yeah, uh, in that unit again. So yeah, and yeah. that's that's a. Uh, yeah, you know, it's funny too because I, I, every time I drive up and down there and I see people with their uh, units open, I always make fun of it because it's like, oh wow, man! Some yeah. people are super organized. Some are, and others, are. others, it's like, uh, there's a show called Hoarding. We'd like you to watch, <laughs> uh, or Hoarders. I mean, um, but no, it was. Uh, I saw ours from a distance, and I'm like, oh, we look like one of those that I always make fun of. So maybe I shouldn't yeah. do that so much. But uh, it's, b- but once you get past that. It's actually very organized. Sure. I know it's one of the last things Melissa did was help get that. Uh, Melissa, your, uh, Buttermilk, sorry, Buttermilk. was to help get that all organized right. and, and set up. And it, it looks really, really nice. I like that new tool. Uh, tool chest works Tool great. chest y'all have. Yeah. It's got a butcher block top, mm-hmm. power wow. strip built in. Yep. It's all these huge casters. It rolls with ease. It's uh, 
It's really, really cool. Nice, nice feature. Because um, before that, it was just like 13 little random, uh, random tool bags. Tool bags. Yeah. <laughs> None the same size, shape, right. nothing. Yeah. Um, now we can open a drawer and see screwdrivers all laid out and grab the one we need. Oh, and they got it like a freaking airplane mechanic. I mean, every Everything little screwdriver is yes, just sir. outlined. And it's, you know, from bigger to smaller. Right. And then uh, I asked for a tape measure the other day. So they open up a, the drawer labeled tape measures. And there's four of them yeah. there, so it's like, do you want the small one, the medium, yeah. uh, the the little bit larger medium one, or the hundred footer? Oh wow! It, it's it was super efficiency, super We're going slick after efficiency. I, I definitely liked it. it, and it's just that little thing saves time. Yeah, when you got to go, I need a tape measure, and you yep. go grab one, and thirty seconds later you have it, as opposed to like digging around trying Searching to figure out which toolbox is it. Yeah. yeah, it is. Uh, it is nice, and you kept a couple tool bags for when you'll have to go grab stuff and do random we projects. Did. But yeah, it's. Uh, yep. It, it was really, I was very impressed at how organized all that's gotten. Well, um, you. Again, you're just doing a good job of showing how much better you are than me. But anyways, so we... Uh, <laughs> how much more time I have than you do. Well, that may be That's the case. a big part of it. But uh, I guess the real thing that we're all dying to find out about is how Jerry's week's been, because Jerry has quite the story, and yes, you can kind of does. tell by the shirt, although I'm pretty sure the laptop blocks the shirt. <laughs> Jerry, who's on your shirt, and why do you have it on? Um, that is because I recently got to go see Miss Janet Jackson in concert again for the third time. Hold on. Wait, the note says Jerry talks about Madonna. It does. Uh, I was wondering about that. No. You want to see Madonna? <laughs> Didn't you no. see Madonna? That is Melissa. No, not me. But Buttermilk? Buttermilk, Melissa, whatever you want to call her. She's the Madonna fanatic. I am the Janet Queen. Well, I don't fanatic. think any of us care about the Janet. I, we, I thought we were going to get a Madonna review. I did so too. If we need to move on to something I heard else Madonna now. has a great show. I, thought, I heard she does I heard too. Janet's phoning it in. Mm-hmm. I, heard, I heard Janet was phoning it in. She wasn't doing a whole bunch of dancing. She was sitting down doing nothing. I hope both of yeah, you yeah, bite so. your tongues <laughs> and you can't talk for a week. Uh, we kid, we kid, of course. But uh, So, where'd you go? What happened? How was it? Um, so I originally had purchased the tickets back whenever she announced. Uh, so it was t- November-ish of last year. And, um, yeah, so we put, purchased the tickets in Nashville. Okay. Um, because I only lived 150 miles away, um, not knowing that Mr. Lee over here was going to offer me a job and pull me off the road, which I'm very thankful for. Don't get me wrong. Um, but... Needless to say, we had to uh, drive from Columbus to Nashville to see her, but it was totally worth it. Totally sure. worth it. Like, it's Miss Jackson. It's, it's. If the, you're nasty. Yes, and I am. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you if you, if y'all follow me on Instagram, you'll see a photo. It's funny. Go check it out. My personal Instagram, JJ Mac Two. Um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> shameless plug. Shameless plug. <laughs> So we go down there. I had VIP packages. So my honey bun went with me, of course. And um, we had VIP packages. We got um, a private entrance. We didn't have to stand in the long line, which was nice. Oh, let me just say, as someone who recently went to Billy Joel and we also went to Blake Shelton. Yes. Yes. That would have been nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, the lines to get yeah. in these stadiums and people like, this is the line that says no bags. Yes. And, and everyone in has it, a bag. And in a, in a stroller. And yeah. it's like, this is, you were, this, what? This is not where you belong. So that's a yes. nice feature. It was uh, very nice. We walked right on in. We went to a private little desk. They had my name on a list. They greeted us. Um, huge poster of Janet there. I got my picture taken with her. Um, I. We then had a private room that we went into. We had cocktails. We had food. Uh, a bunch of other Janet Frant, uh, fans all sure. hanging out. They were playing Janet's music, of course. And um, then we had a private entrance onto the main floor where our seats was. Um, we had uh, center, fourth row. The oh, stage wow. was literally right there. Wow. Like I felt like I could reach out and, reach out and touch her. Wow. It was amazing. But, um, yeah, it, it was awesome. A, a ludicrous open for her. Um, which I'm not a huge Ludacris fan, right. but I do know some of his music, sure. and he did an awesome job. It was crazy. I, I honestly didn't know he was still doing anything. Well, apparently now he's opening act for Janet Jackson. <laughs> yeah. He's no longer headlining. Boy, things have changed. Well, you know, he got out of music for a little bit doing uh, Fast and Furious stuff. Yeah, and true. now he's opening for Janet. But if he's opening for Janet, he's still doing pretty big things. Yeah, it's a lot better than, you know, opening for, like, I can't think of anybody, uh, Blake Shelton. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, then Janet came on, and it was amazing. Like, 
I've this is the third time seeing her. I can honestly say she gave it her all on the first two. This time she gave it even more. 56 years old, the woman killed it. Singing and dancing the entire time, never slowed down, just 150% the entire time. She sat down once through the entire show. Wow. It was amazing. She went all out. It was so awesome. So the burning question that I know Buttermilk wants me to ask you, was she actually singing or was it lip syncing? She sings. Awesome. She does not awesome. lip sync. That's great. Yep. And That's you can actually know. tell because there's there'll be a couple times, you know, where she's taking a breath or something mm-hmm. in the music or her backup singers or something. You can tell she's singing. That's great. Yep. That's yeah. really cool. She comes from a storied family. She's a great artist, obviously. Oh, sure. I mean, where she ranks as far as those uh, that genre goes, we disagree with. But she is still <laughs> an amazing, uh, an amazing singer and dancer and all that such. She's um, an amazing entertainer. W- entertainer, yes. Yeah. And what I love about it, like you said, is she gave one hundred and ten percent. That bothers me to no end. When I talk to friends who go to concerts, or I, I've I've worked those concerts where the artist phones it in, and it's yeah. like there's no need to. I mean. If you don't want to entertain your people, don't tour. Right. Like it's that simple. It just is. Don't it do really it. Is. Um it's just it it's it's aggravating. These people adore you. They spend a lot of money uh-huh. on these tickets <laughs> and then they show up and they don't show up for two hours until after their call time right. or they um Go out there, they do a few songs, get tired, and walk off stage, right. and let other people. Yeah. It's like, no, that's no, not. I came to see you. Yeah, that's that's not that. It's, that's not how you support your fan base. It's funny you said that about the call times because even me and Don made a comment on that that night because Ludacris started exactly on time. He did a forty-five minute set, I believe, and then they started changing the set over for Janet, and we were like, oh, this is going to be a while. Took on fifteen minutes to change the set over, and she started on time, and it was perfect. Like everything awesome. was flawless. I love that awesome. efficiency, and I love the story you told me that uh, a few days later, where they end up stopping en route to New York, I believe it was. Oh, that was I would die if I was still on the road. Yeah, she posted on her Instagram. So her and her choreographer Gil, uh, they woke up and they're like getting off their tour bus, and the other tour bus that had all the dancers. They go over there and they're like waking them up at like four o'clock in the morning and they all go into a Love's truck stop in Maryland and no one's in the truck stop, but they all go in, they're hanging out, they're looking at it. Janet's like, I've never been in a truck stop before. Whoa. And she's like looking at all the stuff Whoa. and they're, awesome. the dancers are talking and there's two lady cashiers and they're both freaking out behind the counter. <laughs> but they spend like probably a good 30 minutes in this truck, in stop, truck stop and say hey to the cashiers and all this stuff and they buy a bunch of snacks and everything and then they were gone but i was thinking the whole time i was watching like if that happened to me i would have just died i would have just been done i could have just killed over right there and and been happy yeah imagine if you'd have been the driver that went in for a shower before the bus is unloaded right and took a long shower because you figure it's four in the morning no one needs a shower and come out after they left and (laughs) They tell you, oh. You wouldn't believe you was just here. Exactly. Yeah. I'd, I'd, have, I'd have been like, uh, yeah, no, yeah oh, no, sure, ha ha. Yeah, and I guess Elvis no is walking in next, right? Like, <laughs> but you know, it's true. You don't think about it, but like these big buses and a lot of them pull trailers, they got to have a place to go to. Oh, and sure. it's really hard to get into yeah. any place. Truck stops are made for large vehicles. So it certainly makes sense. Perfect I've seen a lot of those large uh, Prevos and such come mm-hmm. into truck stops and get diesel, but they usually leave right after. They don't normally stay. And so you're always, you know, you're there pumping your diesel right, right. next to me. You're like, I wonder who's in that bus. Yeah. Yep. It, so. it definitely would have been amazing to see that. But it was really, really cool that they uh, filmed that and she put it on her Instagram. And I agree. Yeah. I'm surprised Love's Truck Stops didn't grab it and uh, throw it all over yeah. the place. Like even Miss Janet sure. uh, dances here. Or, or <laughs> shops here. Yeah. Well, when you have that craving for a bugle... You got to get a bugle. She was standing in line and she was like pointing at the flaming Cheetos and she was like, that's what I used to eat as a kid. She's like, that's that's it right there. That's the snack. That's the go-to. I, I just love the idea of Janet Jackson standing in line for some flaming Cheetos. I'm just saying like, I just, you know, I like, I could see like going in there and being like, I'll take this, 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 and this, and then like walking back to the bus. Right. Like yeah. not uh, trying the cowboy yeah. hats on or the uh, armor. The armor. <laughs> the armor with a sword. The, the armor mask, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then Loves could sell that. This was worn by Janet Jackson. Sell it for $100,000 <laughs> or something. I don't know. Um, Miss Janet, would you mind autographing this, please? Yes. <laughs> I wish I would have done the meet and greet. I do regret it. I do. But 
I'm hoping that there will be another one. Let's hope. It's a lot of it, money just to get a signature. Just to, just to, you know, I mean. Right, right. I, I mean, worked. It was like four times the amount that we paid for the VIP. Oh, yeah. yeah that's, I don't that's know that it's worth money. it. I think you'd have had Briar some more if you did it. Because it's not like quality time. No. It's not like you get a chance to really talk. I've, I've, you know, as, as I established before, I've, I, that was my old uh, gig was doing sound. And I worked with a lot of really famous people doing concerts. And you would see those meet and greets happen behind stage. And it's going to line them up. The artist comes over there. They kind of like, some would just say hi, some would handshake, some would hug. And, and you get 12 seconds, not yeah. even 30 seconds with right. the person. I mean, and then you're on to the next person, on the next person, on the next person. And to think that you spent that much money on 10 seconds. Uh, I, I think I, I would have done it. I, I regret not doing it. Even if it was five seconds, just to be able to stand next to her and have a photo. Like Janet is my idol. She is an icon sure. to me. She, she is just everything to me. And just to have a photo with her, that would just. We did it. We also did it with a comedian, uh, Liza Schlesinger, I think yes. her name is. Um, it, it wasn't, four times as much as the tickets you bought. It was, it was a, a premium, but not quite as much. And it was the same kind of thing where um, she actually got to interact a little bit with Eliza because she had made a fancy shirt that was one of Eliza's sayings or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and got pictures, and Eliza actually took a picture of her in her shirt. Oh, wow. Because it was her saying, and she thought it was great, and actually put it on Instagram. So that was one of those things like where that that's pretty cool, right? Yeah. This is somebody who you really like. That was pretty cool. I just stood back and was like, these people is crazy. But, <laughs> you just counting you know. out the dollars, right? <laughs> exactly. You're just like, well. exactly. I was counting how many dollars per minute is this costing me? But <laughs> it, it, was, it was a lot of fun, and she enjoyed it, and it was worth it. It yeah. was worth it for her enjoyment. Well, certainly. I have gotten that. So, like, I've always talked about I don't get starstruck. Never have. Sure. It's just not a thing that, you know, I don't care if you're uh, Warren Buffett. If we're at the same hotel and right. you're at the bar, I'll come hang out next to you and we'll just chat like we're just sure. people. I, oh, yeah. I don't, I just don't get that. I never have gotten that, but I do love comedians. I love people who make me laugh. And so I think that's a special gift that only a few people have. And so that's the closest thing I'll get to starstruck. I'm still not starstruck. I still don't care that much, but that is the one thing where I'm like, this is really cool. Right. And I've gotten a chance to meet a lot of them over the years that I like. Um, I just don't know if I'd pay extra money for it. I actually was thinking, so Every now and then you'll see these companies, uh, like these charities, give away like, hey, have a dinner with uh, Billy Joel. Right. And it's obscene. It's like it $150,000. Right. But it's it's for charity. It's for charity. So yeah. for like a rich person, it's a it's a write-off. Um, I, spoiler alert, I'm not $150,000 going to hang out with Billy Joel. Uh, that's not in the cards. But if it ever was... That at least I can understand, like, it's going to a good cause, right. and I get quality time with a person. You do get quality time at that point, um, yes. This is just not, uh, this is just not that same situation. It's just, it's just a, a blip. So that's why it's like, I don't know, I don't, I think you're better off having not spent the money. Um, and then you could buy, like, five more Janet concerts for the yeah. same amount of money. Yeah, I just hope she does another one. Like, I know she's getting older, and... Oh, she's... <laughs> <laughs> but still, I know what Chilly, I mean. What do you think? What do you think old. about her? Look, his assessment look, of look, her age. Look, look, what I mean by that is she's fifty-six. It's not going to. No, it's not going to be much longer. She's not going to be able to do the dancing full on like she does. Cher is one hundred and seventy-two Cher years old. Stands there and just waves Dolly her wig Parton. back and forth. <laughs> well, Dolly Parton Madonna, is ninety-four. Madonna's in her in her sixties or seventies. I forget how old she is now, but she's doing the whole dancing thing still. So does Janet she, Jackson, you know what they say? She? I can't probably say that on this podcast. <laughs> Janet Jackson in five years will still be getting her groove on. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah, it, she has yeah. said numerous times though that she's loving being a new mother. She, you know, her son is six years old, and and she's focusing more on that home life. So I think this is well, gonna. If she ends up doing a, uh, if she ends up doing a farewell tour like Elton John, then you'll have ten more years to listen. <laughs> exactly. To her. Exactly. Uh, his so, farewell tour has been going on since two thousand sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a comment. I want to. I want to read the comment to Jerry, but I have a question before I read the comment. It, it kind of has to do with YouTube etiquette. All right. All right. So the comment is from business drivers. Yes. Right? We know who business drivers is. So when we read the comment, do we say it's coming from business drivers or can I say their name? Um, I'm hoping that they actually 
follow up and tell us what they think too. But anyway, so the comment from business drivers is, hey, Jerry, don't worry. In 10 years or so, they'll be hoping someone asked their autograph out back in the, of the casino. <laughs> <laughs> and Jerry will be at the casino finishing yeah. the slot machines. I have a weird She feeling. performed at in Reno at the Grand Casino uh, whenever what? she did her up close and personal tour. Right. We went and seen her up close and personal in Atlanta, but she did. She performed at the Grand in Reno. So she's been there. So for those of you that don't know, uh, Jerry and I, we used to always, um, how do we put this? We always used to jest, I'll say. Every every time I called Jerry and talked to him, be like, so how uh, you on your way to Reno? <laughs> and, you know, it sounds crazy, but I'm going to say a solid 40% of the time you were. Or you were in Reno. <laughs> I would say a good 50% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> that was his deal. He found a certain load. And, and, and if you work for one of our carriers, you know the load I'm talking about. And I mean, he would always grab that load and head straight out to Reno. They had a uh, apartment at the Grand. No, it wasn't. A, it was a. <laughs> they went to this. They went to this Grand so many times. They never paid for a room. No. I believe it. They just showed up and they it. were like, "Oh, oh, Mr. Jerry, here's the keys." Uh, like, yeah, we had free rooms. He goes stand. He goes stand in line, and they someone would take him out of line. Like, you don't have to wait. Yeah, you don't, have to, you don't wait. have to wait. No, no, you're, you're good, Mr. Barrow. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait. No, 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 no. no. Uh, it's fun whenever you're playing the slots, and all of a sudden that little message pops up and it says, "You've reached the next tier. Congratulations! Please proceed to the kiosk desk to get your new card." Nice. That's always fun. Nice. <laughs> I hate the one where it's like you hit a jackpot and it's like, well, it's not really a jackpot. It's just some, like maybe a five hundred dollars, and you're like, well, it's not really a jackpot. Jackpot is a couple thousand. Five hundred bucks is nice. It's nice, but it's not a jackpot. No, and then they're like, we're out. gonna cash you out. Please wait for a casino attendant. <laughs> and thirty five minutes later, yeah. the casino attendant shows up, and right. it's like, oh. I can still so be playing. That's I could, when you, know, you go to Yamaha. Give it all that back. Yamaha and the Palms in in Palm Springs and Yamaha and outside of Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a new system set up to where you can fill out all your tax information at the desk, and then they'll give you like a little personal identification number. And so when you hit a jackpot, you just punch it into the system, and it adds it over to your total, and you go on. Nice. That is nice, but it's best for me nice. just to stay at the casinos. <laughs> yes. I, um, yeah, that is funny. I don't know. You think Jackson is going to ever get to that point? I think she would retire before she got to that point. But she's still superstar, Matt. I, I, I think she's still superstar level, right? She, she's she is not... superstar level, I think. But I think a lot of it, too, is are you having fun with it? If you're having fun touring and not just worn out because you've toured for so much so much time of your life, yeah. and she's got a young son. He's a couple years old now, right? He's six. Is he, has it been six years? Yeah. So, you know, maybe he wants to grow up. She wants to grow up. She wants to be with her son while he's growing up and ha- let him have as much of a normal life as he can, being that his dad is like a prince or something. Correct. You know, and she's, yeah. you know, Janet Jackson. So, But she, I feel like, too, she's also... Uh, getting to a point where her tours can be ten shows a year. Oh sure, yeah. and not yeah, not not five a week. I think she needs a residency in Vegas or something. Is she there yet? People have said that before. I I disagree. I totally one hundred percent disagree. You are right. This tour that she's doing, the Together Again tour, she's only got about twenty spots okay. that she's doing. Yeah, it's not you know, and every single one of them is sold out. Um. I think that's what I like seeing is the fact that she is who she is and that status and she can still sell out right. arenas. And yeah. yeah, I've got a uh, comedian I follow on online and I think he's freaking hysterical. And he just announced a world tour and I was like, oh, let me see where he plays. Because occasionally he plays Columbus and I was like, maybe it'd be something we can go see. And it was 25 dates over like a year and a half and I'm like, is that really a world tour? Um, but it is. I mean, it's it it's is. the same show over. He literally is going the entire world. Sure. He's going to be in Australia. He's going to be in uh, Europe for a while. And but they are. It makes sense too, especially comedy shows. You comedy shows are kind of a weekend thing. Sure, you're not. Mm, I mean, like unless you're a huge comedian, that's Jerry Seinfeld, Jay Leno kind of person, you're probably not going to go to their show on a Tuesday night. No, uh, no. that's a, more of something I want to go see on a Friday or Saturday night. Right. And that's most of his dates are Friday, Saturday nights. And most headliners are doing Friday, Saturday. Maybe two yep. shows on Saturday. You know, an early show, which is 8 o'clock, and a late show at 10 o'clock or something. But Yes, exactly. I'd be curious to know if if, if he's doing a, that many, that, that, those shows over a year and a half, how much is his act changing over that year and a half? Because, you know, comedians tend to do the same act on on the tour. It might adjust a little bit for current events, but yeah. I'd be curious to know how much he's changing his act over that year and a half. So I've heard uh, him talk about this a little bit, and I've, I've heard some of the some of his, uh, you know, he talks about, like, um, 
like his act for that tour will be basically the same. Okay. He did, it was funny. He was talking about having a he, he has to change some of his act because in Europe, like he has some stuff in there about Starbucks. Right. Just to be funny. In Europe, no one gets it. Yeah, they don't get it. It just Starbucks. lands flat. They're like, what? What a Starbucks? Who cares? Yeah. So um, it is funny to see him progress through that and talk about how he changes it regionally. Sure. But he's not doing stuff that's timely. So if you're not doing material that's current events, right. you don't have to worry, you don't about, have to worry that. about that so much. Um, so he is able to now. He'll work on other material and do it at other shows. So when he comes out of this tour, he'll have a fresh tour, sure. a fresh a hour fresh ready act. to go yeah. right after this, yeah. because he's going to be working on it that whole time. Um, but yeah, as far as this is going, it's um, it, I, I, uh, it's going to be the same show almost every night. Which makes sense. Which does make sense. sense. I mean, Seinfeld yeah. does the same thing. You go see Seinfeld sure. uh, on the road. You go see him in New York, and when he pops into a club, he's not working on the same material. No, he's right. getting, he's no. developing he's, his next he's hour. Working out, he's getting his muscles worked out. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, if we can bring it back to trucking for just a moment, sure. I know the entertainment part was very entertaining. It was very entertaining. This question, Patrick, um, is one that I think you get quite a bit. Oh gosh, and you hate. Hold on, you hate hearing. Can I ask? You can ask. Can I guess? You, you can guess. All right, right I'm going to say it's two different things. I'm okay. not. Oh no, it's three different things. All right. I'm going to say we have three things. Okay. I'm going to say we have solos, sprinter vans, or 65 miles an hour. You are correct in one of them. Okay. Now that you know it's one of those three, solos, sprinter vans, or 65 miles an hour, do you want to narrow it down and see if you can figure out which one it is? It's not solos because you would have, someone would have moderated and s- s- talked about that already. Okay. So it's sprinter vans or it's 65 miles an hour. Ooh, how about I dress both? I know I'd have to guess first. Well, I want you to guess first so we can see how good you are at guessing, and then you can address both. 65 miles an hour for the win, Bob. You are correct. Thank you. you Thank win you. This plastic wrapper from my five hour. <laughs> nice. I bet, uh, <laughs> I bet the question is going to be something to the effect of. Why can't we go 72 miles an hour, or why are we limited to 65 miles an hour? The question exactly from Raylene is, why are we going at 65? So this is a fun question because it fun there, question. it's it's multi-pronged. Right. Like a good trident, there are uh, multiple sharp uh, points on this one. So uh, the biggest thing, right, is... Um, Oh, I just got a text from Melissa Buttermilk. Really wants to know why we govern at 65. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, three things. The first is uh, the most obvious that everybody knows, fuel savings, right? Sure. It yeah. is a whole lot more efficient to run 65 than it is 70. That's the that's the big one, right? So uh, high fuel trucking pays for fuel. Fuel savings uh, helps add to um, our operating income. Sure. So that's the first easy one that everybody understands. The second one, and it is a big jump. You go 65 to 72 miles an hour, you're talking 15-ish percent of fuel economy savings. That's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot of um, money. Going from 50 to 65, not a lot, but once you get those higher speeds, drag really kicks in and it really, really hits your, uh, your fuel economy quite okay. a bit. Secondly, um, we have a very large fleet that goes to Canada and in Quebec and What's the other one? Ontario. They are uh, required trucks to be governed to 65 miles an hour. Require it by the government. Right. And you can't, it's not good enough just to go 65. No, you have if to they, be governed. Yes, if they do a roadside, they will plug into your computer right. of your truck and they will verify that you are, are governed at 65. Um, there are some people that say, well, if you go there, either FedEx or Panther will pay for you then to get your truck governed down and they'll get you to pay you to ungovern the truck. Right. The thing is, they will sometimes... But it's you got to be the last option. You know what I mean? Like right. you got to be the yeah. last possible option. There's no option. one else, that can, no one else that can run that yeah. freight. Then they'll do it. So now you're down a few hours before the border. Right. You're down a few hours after the border, um, which kills your productivity. Sure. And it again, you're the dead last person, as opposed to someone who is governed at 65 already has a passport. They're going to get a load. They're going to be able to negotiate that load. They're going to be able to run that load. And usually, hopping into Canada is very profitable for both carriers. They make a good bit of money going there. And so it is, um, it's helpful to already have that. Plus, if we said, okay, well, let's just regulate the entire Canada fleet 
to 65, but let's make the non-Canadian fleet not 65. Well, what we're doing there is we're encouraging people not to go to Canada. Yes, we are. So we are incentivizing run. people to make less money, so they're not going to Canada, plus it's costing more money. So that's really ultimately how we got to that situation. Um, this is a revolving conversation. It's something we analyze all the time and something we have looked at. It it gets looked at frequently. We, we do the cost analysis on it. As the trucks get more fuel efficient, as the technology builds, so like on brand new Cascadias, I mean brand, brand new Cascadias uh, within the past couple of years, you could actually, as a truck's owner, go onto the truck and uh, from a computer okay, wirelessly away from that truck, and you can actually program it to go uh, to, to change the governor on the fly. Now the truck has to stop, and they have to do a little cycle to catch the update. Sure. But now you're not going to a truck stop. You're not having to deal with our, our, our uh, uh, f- dealership. A dealership, and right. you get the speed governed and ungoverned. And you can actually do that on the fly pretty easily. The majority of our fleet's not those trucks, but we're getting there. So that's one of those things that we're looking at adjusting as that happens. Um, plus, there's other things going on in the industry that could have impacts on that as well. So we are constantly evolving and looking at that. As of right now, our fleet's governed at 65. And it's not it's not ideal, but it's the best solution we have for now. Sure. I mean, we, do, we do have teams that want to come drive for us, but that's a hang-up and they won't come. And that is frustrating. Trust me, as, a, as an owner of a truck, I'd much rather have a team in it than I would have it sit on a lot. But it's uh, it's just not something right now that's feasible. And I'm hoping in the future it changes. Look, I'm, I drove for a long time with Eric. We drove 65 miles an hour. We completely get it. Everybody at this table, as a matter of fact, has run 65 yeah. miles an hour. Yeah. Um, and we totally get it. And we get the frustration. I understand that being next to a Swift truck that's going 64 and I can go 65. I get that. I really, really do. Or go up a mountain and I can buzz past someone, come down the other side of that hill, and they fly behind me. I get that frustration. I, I'm hoping for a solution. I don't have one. Um, but we are constantly keeping an eye on it. I got to say, when we picked those two trucks up from Dallas and they weren't governed, correct. being able to drive them back at the speed limit of 75 was nice. It was. It, it it was nice. Well, I think, that, I'll was, leave it I think that. that was seventy. Actually, those were governed at seventy. They they? Were, you're right. They were governed at seventy. Yeah. So that, but that was nice to run at seventy with with the flow of traffic versus sixty five, where you feel like you're the one comfortable. Um, I, I'm. I think I know the answer to this next question. I want. I have two questions for you. Okay. Um, one is, if you were to govern the truck at let's say sixty five on the pedal and sixty seven, sixty eight on cruise, that still would would not work with Canada's laws, correct? Correct. They want it governed at 65, period, no faster than that. Yeah, because one thing Freightliner's had for quite a few years now, it's it's a really great, if you don't run Canada, it's a really great program where you can actually program in a fuel mileage and basically tell the truck, hey, if this team is averaging, or this driver's averaging over this many miles per gallon, give them a bump in speed to here. Okay. And what that does is for a disciplined team that's good going, you know, 65 miles an hour, but they do need every now and then to get around someone so they get that extra bump of speed. Mm-hmm. They can get it, and then when they get around that person, they can go back to what they were doing. Right. Um, it's a really cool feature. It's been out for a while. I mean, our 2015 truck had it. Um, that even violates Canada's laws. Okay. So they, if right. they see that on, even that will trigger uh, a problem. It, it, and when you talk about Canada, I mean, you're talking major implications. Both carriers keep lawyers on both sides of the uh, border on retainer just to handle those issues because a couple violations well, will completely disqualify a carrier from being able to run that. The entire carrier Correct. from going into Canada. Interesting. And they don't acknowledge very interesting. They don't acknowledge who owns the truck. They yeah. only look at the carrier. The carrier. So it is uh it, it's it is it, it is what it is. It's very unfortunate. And, and what's frustrating too about Canada is it's not countrywide. Just like those you two can provinces. pop you can pop right. into Manitoba and do eighty. They don't yeah, care. They don't care. Um as long as the speed limit's that the um, it's just those other two provinces, and, and it's those two provinces are the bulk of the freight. Yeah, yeah. I want to ask a question, but I think it's not probably. It's kind of just kind of out of left field, and I'm not sure. I'm sure you're prepared for it, but I don't know if this is the the the. Uh, well, let's give it a shot. We're talking about governing trucks at 65 miles an hour. Yes, there is a. Um, 
a period right now the FMCSA has of, of public comment on governing, requiring all trucks in the United States be governed at 65 miles an hour. Yeah. Um, thoughts? I have mixed feelings. Okay. Well, thanks for that, Patrick. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I do have mixed feelings because I do understand as a solo in a tractor trailer hauling produce. Sure. I'm, like, we're just going to be that specific. Our, our, our cattle hauler especially cattle haulers, you've got a truck that has to get somewhere quickly. You're a solo, so you can only run so many hours a day. So the amount of miles you can run over a short period, 11 hours, you need to maximize. Right. Especially when you're hauling cattle, because if they stay in that trailer too long, they, there's, it's a, I can't remember what it's called, but there's a stress hormone they release, mm-hmm. and it'll ruin the beef. Right. They will literally have to kill the animal and, dis- and burn it. They'll discard everything on it. Um, so you have a very limited time that you can work. Um, in, in fresh produce, same thing. When you're bringing it across country, you have a limited amount of time that stuff needs to be in your... It's by, only by for so Correct. Long. Sure. So I do agree there are circumstances on the in the country where going 75 miles an hour across the desert... Again, when I say 75, I mean when the speed limit allows for right. it. I'm not advocating for speeding. No, but when the speed but, limit allows. But, yes, and, and nothing ever above 75. There are no commercial truck tires for semi-trucks that are speed rated for over, over 75. So when you see a truck pass you going faster than 75, they are now exceeding the speed rating of the tires they're running on. That is incredibly dangerous. And I've heard people say, well, there's a safety margin there, so you don't have to worry about it. Correct, but you're not supposed to ride in the safety right. margin. That's for... It's the margin is for error. It's not for continuous use. Sure. So I am anti anything going faster than 75, but um, I do recognize there are certain circumstances where a driver may need to go that fast. In our industry, we run team trucks. We have appointment times uh, We ha- that are slower than 65 miles an hour based. We have carriers that understand traffic and weather, and they do compensate for that. There's no competitive advantage to it. Right. So I'm anti that law. I am. I don't think the FMC, I think they're overstepping saying that. Now, if they want to say 75 miles an hour, I'm on board with that. But I'm not really on board with less than that because of certain circumstances. Um, but in our industry, it doesn't make sense. Sure. So that's where I think, you know, and, and I look at it like this. When we got into driving, there was a 30-minute reset. I mean, you literally... If you could sit in that truck from, uh, you know, one to midnight and, and drive your eleven hours, mm. you could do it straight. Right. And I did back in those days. Sure. I, if I was in a spot and I needed to get somewhere, I could. Um, then the thirty minute rule came out, and if you remember when the thirty minute rule came out, it came with this. Uh, it came with another rule, which was your sleep cycles. Mm-hmm. Horrible rule that said a driver to get his thirty four hour reset or her thirty four hour reset, they must sleep two periods between like midnight and 5 a.m. or something like that. Right. And it was a horrible rule, and it yeah. really screwed up team driving, and it was based completely on a theory of um, this is what's best because people sleep better at night, so we're going to have people get two shifts at night. It's not rooted in science. It's completely bureaucratic. Right. And it hurt the industry and, and provided zero safety. None. It made absolutely it didn't make that safety tick mark move at all. It made absolutely no difference. Thankfully, within a year or so, they scrapped that rule. They did come out and say, hey, we were wrong, and they got rid of it. But for a year, it was rough. And I was a night driver at that time. So it really, really dug into uh my ability to, to work. So I do see at times the the F, I think at all times the FMCSA is trying to make it safer. But at times they do stuff based on a theory or a hunch, right. not based on science. Yeah. I know that that happened before I started my driving career. And when I heard about that and I read about that, I was so happy that we didn't have to have those two periods between that time for three for our reset. Because as, as a team driver, that really does screw you up. It, it was, really does. It was terrible. Um, and now the 30 minute rule is even laxed a little bit on what you can or cannot do during right. that time. It has, they are. I'm glad they are going back and looking at it and saying um, that there are, um, you know, hey, we may have made a mistake. Here's how we're going to tweak sure. it to make it. I, I do like sure. that they're doing that. It just stinks that it's sometimes, like with the 30 minute rule, it took years for them to come around to that changing. So, yeah, uh, I, I, I did. I was a driver at, when that, that change took place. 
And I was happy to see that we could use loading time as, you know, on-duty loading time as part of that 30-minute break or fueling time as part of that 30-minute break. That was a nice change. Um, my my thoughts on governing, governing at 65, uh, I had thoughts, and then I lost them because you talked for a little bit, and I completely lost what I was going to say. Um, but it, it, to me, it the bigger issue with governing at 65 is not – all trucks running at 65 and not be able to pass somebody, but it's the states that have the split speed limit or the, the difference in speed limits. Yeah. California comes to mind. In California, a car can legally do 70 miles an hour on the same route, road that a truck can only do 55. And there have been studies that have shown that that diff- differentiation in speed limits are less safe than trucks going faster or the, the equal speed limit. So you have a few states that work that way, but it, it seems like that would be something that would um, be – safer, more important, or safer than governing trucks at 55. Just a thought. But Well, and I do know the split speed limit, they did uh, quite a few studies on it. Indiana, I think it's Indiana. Got, oh, maybe it wasn't Indiana. I think it was Indiana. Indiana was that way, and now they're not Indiana's more. still that way. Indiana, still, okay, what uh, Indiana? It was six, 65. Texas. It was Texas. Sorry. Right. Uh, the almighty Texas. They... Um, they actually did a bunch of studies on it, and they came back and said that having um, all commercial trucks going slower than all cars, that became a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they scrapped that rule. They also had – I remember going to Texas as a kid. We'd go to Astro World to uh, Six Flags, and it was like their speed limit system was insane because it was uh, – speed limit 70 unless your truck was 65. Unless you're a car at night, in which case it's 60. Unless you're a truck at night, which is 55. Right. And it was like, whoa. Yeah, just crazy. And you had to identify what's night, yeah. what's daytime. Right. Um, California is another one that comes to mind. Uh, they have a weird rule with their trucks that I think a lot of people get misunderstood uh, because if you look on the signs of what is uh, what, what vehicles are, are required to go 55, it says a truck with three axles or more. Right. Or a truck towing a anything. Any, any, any vehicle. Any vehicle. Even a car yes. towing is 55 miles an hour in California. Correct. Yeah. If you look up the law, the law which I have looked up, it's uh, – if you look up the law, it actually says any vehicle over 26,001 pounds. Right. So even the two-axle trucks that can go – that are 33,000-pound trucks, which are common at both carriers sure. that we work with – even they can technically only legally only go 55 miles an hour. Nobody, because they don't say it on the sign, nobody goes back to the California law and looks at it. So there's some people that say if you have a lift axle and you raise your lift axle up, you can go this much because you only have two axles on the ground, or or I'd rather be in a two axle truck that way can go faster. If you go back to the law, you can actually find that that is not right. It's and not legal. Sure. It's not legal. And the problem is the signs don't really disclose that. So if you go through California and you're doing 70, because that's what the speed limit says, and you get a ticket, you're getting 15 over, 15 which over. is a disqualifier at both carriers. So at, at Panther, they give you a little bit of wiggle room if you've never had anything on your record. Sometimes they can kind of get past it. But at, at FedEx, it's a hard line, like 15 and over. You're, Done. you're gone See for a that. year, 12 months. So it is one of those things where you really got to be careful with that stuff because even though the sign says one thing, it goes back to what the law says, and it's up to the DOT officer what they enforce or what they don't enforce. It's not, to me, worth uh, rolling the dice, but I know a lot of people who spend a lot of time splitting those hairs, and it's like those hairs really aren't there to uh, to be split like you They're think not. they are. And is it really worth it to split them? I don't believe so. Is it truly worth it to split them? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um. I like what Donna said. She said, I've had drivers uh, ask me to turn it up to 70, 75 because they have trouble passing and people messing with them. Uh, her suggestion was take a ramp and let them go by you. Yeah. You and I have talked about we before talked about where we've had situations yeah. where we try to get past this person, we're making a little bit of progress, and then all of a sudden they find other gear, yep. and then they can get a little further past yep. us, and then we're back to passing them. And sometimes it, it really is just knock that cruise control down one, That's it. one mile an one hour. One mile an hour, 64 and, and then, ride and let them go. Yeah. And again, let them go. 64 sounds crazy until you think about the fact that we're, we're dispatched on 55. Yeah. You got plenty of time, plenty even of time. at 64 miles an hour. Plenty I remember there was a couple of people, Bob and Linda Caffey, that were driving with FedEx back when I first got in the business. And 
they were kind of like the first famous celebrity expediters. Their truck, they ran 57 or 58 mm-hmm. miles an hour. I believe it. That's all they ran. Yeah. And they talked about getting 14 miles per gallon, like crazy numbers. Like their fuel bill was nothing. Right. Uh, and that's what they always ran. And they never had issues with it because that's what the carriers dispatch you at. Right. They kept it running. They kept their sh- stops short and uh, and pocketed all that money. So it's the, as a team driver, the need for speed just isn't there. It's just not there. As a solo and a tractor, totally different animal. Depending on what, what cargo you're hauling. A- absolutely. You yes. Know, we had a solo run with us when he his partner went uh, had to leave. Yeah, he ran with us for his time before he had to go. Um, but <laughs> that sounded horrible when I said that. Yeah. Uh, but he ran with us for the time that he was allowed to run solo. He couldn't find a partner. He's no longer with us. But um, even his loads, because we, we were, Melissa and I were his mentor. Even his loads that. Um, he got, he had plenty of time as a solo to make happen. Yes. Any load that we got dispatched on that we were concerned about the time, whether it's pickup time or delivery time as it was short, before we even negotiated the load, we would talk about, hey, I can't make, I, I can't be there in this time. I recognize that you think that I can do 30 miles in an hour. Not in Southern California. I'm sorry. Not going to happen. Yeah. Especially from where I'm at, I need more time. Yeah. And they either take us off the load or they'd adjust our time. On both sides. If I'm sitting there, I'm doing 65, and I got somebody that's messing around with me, and I need to drop down to 64, I drop to 64. I know how much time I have on that load, so I'm not concerned about not being able to make it on time because I can't do 70. Yeah. If I've got to pick up the pace because I'm going to be late, I screwed up somewhere. You know, If I have traffic that's going to make me late at 65, I'm going to hop on the phone and call my carrier and say, hey, I'm stuck in this traffic. And guess what they're going to do? They're going to fire up Google Maps, just like I did, and look at it and go, yep, we see your, you know, it's red for yes. the next five miles. Nothing you can do, and they're going to adjust my time. Then I'm, I'm not going to get penalized if I make that phone call and say, hey, traffic's backed up, road, highway's closed, I can't get there on time. Absolutely. I've never had a problem because uh, I didn't have enough time or I thought I had to go faster than 65 to make yeah. a, a delivery or pickup on time. Well, at the end of the day, both these companies are billion-dollar companies. Sure. Um, billion-dollar companies don't want to make the news. They don't. And no. making a driver go faster than what the driver feels is safe is a big no-no for both Huge. of them. They are just like, nope, we err on the side of caution, we err yep. on the side of safety, and go from that. It's... um. And, and and even we're not a billion dollar company, we still feel the same way. Like there's sure. no there's no reason to put the vehicle. More importantly, your life at risk, or the life of the people that travel or, around exactly. you. Exactly, it's just not worth it to haul the cargo. Right. So no, nothing on that truck, nothing in the box of that truck. I want to make sure I say this right. correctly. None of the cargo that we haul is worth anyone being injured or losing their life for. None of it. Period. Correct. And that's how we ran our truck. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, there are, and both carriers understand that, which is great. And it's sure. one of the things we look at and we talk to carriers and we decide who we're going to work with. Um, we're in the process now of vetting some carriers because we're looking for a third option. We had third option a while back and we want to get another one now. And when you look at um, talking to carriers, that's a big concern is where does safety fit in this? Yeah. Some companies, safety fits behind finance. Some companies, most companies that we want to work with, safety fits in front of right. finance. Right. Uh, we want to make sure that safety is pulling the strings so that if something uh, like that were to happen, safety says, no, you do what you got to do. And you don't have to worry about dispatch saying, no, you will do this because uh, we need the crate freight move there fast. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's something that... It, it, just like if I can go back to Billy and um, Josh for a moment. Yes. Um, they're just an example of when we, we get teams and we move them into their truck and we show them their truck, we walk around the truck with them. We show them all the different pieces. We open up the toolboxes and we show them their tire chains. And we tell them, HIFO tucking does not require you to chain. Panther nor FedEx requires you to chain. If you get to somewhere and there is chain law in effect, shut it down. Call your carrier. Let them know. I don't feel safe chaining. They will not penalize you. Yes. They will take it and say, okay, well, let's know when you can roll. And yeah. that's it. 
No, yeah. None of most of our chains in our trucks are still in bags. They look brand new. Brand when they new. Come back. Well, it might be a little rusty, rusty from the water. water leaking in the box, <laughs> yeah. right? But and but people are surprised when we tell them that. Yeah, they're surprised when we tell them we prefer you didn't run. We prefer you shut down and be safe. Absolutely. You know, based on port. based on what you're comfortable with. Sure. I mean, like we've got uh, one team comes to mind. They've been with us forever. They're literally our first team we ever had. They are from Salt Lake City. They drove school bus and and city bus for this and. Chaining up was a daily activity yeah. outside of Salt Lake City. Right. If you've ever been there, there it, you think of Salt Lake, you think of the Great Salt Lake, you think of the the plains where they race all those cars and yep. everything, and and how uh, dry it is there and such. And when you go there, it's actually surrounded by mountains. It, is. it shocked me the first time I was in Salt Lake. I was like, <laughs> "Wow, this place is beautiful!" And oh, look at all the snow. Um, so for them, chaining is nothing. It's like putting a seatbelt on. You yeah, just do it naturally. It. You just do it. So for them, if they need a chain, they chain. They yeah. don't think twice about it. They just do it. Kay- if you are, I'm sorry, Kayla and Eric Bender. Kayla grew up yes, in Idaho, Idaho, and she would chain all the time. Yes, no problem. Jimmy, she, she would chain all the time. Yes, and Kayla's what all of five foot. Yeah, whatever. She, yeah, she'd hop out and do it. No problem. Yeah, Jimmy and Kelly. So the first time uh, in Kelly's, uh, so Kayla's uh, runs our Panther fleet mm-hmm. now. Uh, they're off the road. They work for us internally. Uh, Kelly and Jimmy. Kelly, uh, you've seen them on the podcast before. We already had them. But if you haven't seen them, Kelly runs our FedEx fleet, and uh, is and Jimmy is our maintenance guru for the entire fleet, uh, along with Don. And uh, they, when they were driving together, one of the first loads they did was to Aspen, California, in the middle of winter. Colorado. And, yes. What I say? Aspen, California. It's close enough. <laughs> they went to Aspen, uh, Colorado, in the middle of winter. And we were texting with them or calling. I don't know how it went down. Um, and they were like, yeah, we're in Aspen. And we're like, but there was a winter storm. Like, oh, we just threw chains or whatever. But I know them from uh, being Florida people. They live in right. Georgia now, but they're right. from Florida. And I'm like, I don't want Florida people throwing chains. Like, <laughs> right. what's happening here? We'll come to find out. Uh, he, Jimmy lived in Colorado for years. So he grew up in Wisconsin, and he grew up in Wisconsin. Yeah. So throwing chains was no big deal. Yeah. But man, I was sweating. I was like, ah, <laughs> I, I've told many people this: chaining is, is great if you know how to do it and you're safe. Mm-hmm. It is not a problem. It's not. And most people don't know when you're chaining and you're running, you're actually doing like 20 miles an hour. It's very, very slow. Um, if that, even sometimes you're even going slower than that. So I, I, I choose personally. My personal safety minimum says. Uh, as if I'm chaining, it's to get out of a bad spot. Correct. It is not yes. to continue the freight. Yes. Other people don't have that. That's they fine. Don't. But that's my minimum. And uh, so it kind of depends on 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 what what your comfort level is. I tell people all the time, I don't want people learning how to chain on our three hundred thousand dollar truck. Like, no. if you go to school and want to learn on a nineteen eighty nine Freightliner sure. dump truck, sure, sure but not on the trucks we're putting you in. I right. don't want you to learn how to do it on that. Um, but it, again, it's up to the driver to make their decision. We support you either way. If you think you're good, we're behind you. We'll support sure. that. If you think you're not good, we're behind you. We support that. It's all about what you feel safe doing. So yeah, I can honestly Melissa. say in, in 14 years, I never chained a truck in my life. I wouldn't even know where to begin. Well, I know. I well, first remember watching a video. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember watching a video of yours way back, maybe before I even got started driving myself. And you had these fancy things called auto chains on your truck. Now that, yes. yeah, I mean, if, no. if, if I so, if I can recreate that for just one moment, can I get the can I get the camera here, Jerry? Just, <laughs> just ask you for this. This is this is my impersonation of Jerry on his video. So yeah, y'all, we had to run through uh, Colorado today and chain laws are in effect and all these other trucks along the side of us and as I'm saying all the other trucks I'm actually showing a shot of all these trucks on the side of the road in the chain up area yeah they had to all stop and what did I do I just flipped a switch on my dashboard my auto chains engaged and I kept on going I don't know how to start chain with chains I, I, I never know where to start with those thanks Jerry thanks for oh, that I'm telling you I, I ran <laughs> I had auto chains almost my entire trucking career until I came to Highfield and I'm not gonna say I'll address that. it I'm happy to address <laughs> it I'm happy to address it and you're seeing it right now I love it no I, 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 entire truck how about a web search for it? What is happening? Siri's wow, taking over Siri the podcast. Just in all of a sudden. <laughs> wow. Yeah, auto so, chains wow. are amazing. I love them. I, they got me out of some bad situations. And there was a many a time oh, sure. when we went through situations like that, and I would flip that switch and yeah. then kick in. Like so, th- uh, real quick, 
before you start saying something, there was one time me and Don was driving and we were out in um, Utah, maybe, or Colorado. I can't remember. But I do specifically remember going up a mountain that all the trucks hit ice. Right. They were stopped. Mm -hmm. There was 18 wheelers sliding down the mountain. I got nervous. I felt the truck kick out a little bit underneath me. I, I slowed it down. I kicked the auto trains in, and I cruised right on up that yeah. mountain, and I didn't have yeah. to stop. It was amazing. I loved it. I didn't realize so, at that point you didn't you weren't running for Highfield at that point. Yeah, I was. So when we got here, I was like, "Where are my auto trains at?" <laughs> uh, and and Patrick was like, "No, yeah. no, no, sorry, no auto trains." We've had so, that conversation so, before. Uh, yeah, and here's how that conversation goes: because obviously, you see, I'm anti auto chain. He's pro auto chain. <laughs> So here's my problem with auto chains. Auto chains make people brave. Oh sure. And it puts people. Oh sure. Uh, it puts people in situations where they think they have it made and they don't. Yeah. And they don't know any better. So that's my issue with it. Uh, auto chains only work like you said. You those people are slipping, sliding the ice, but the ice, the road was covered with snow. I assume yeah. because auto uh, chains of any type, auto chains are not auto chains. They only work with snow or gravel or something. You have to have something to grip. Sure. If you're on ice, it's like pulling a, a, a skate on ice. It's going right. to go wherever it's going to go. Like, you have to have something to grip. People don't realize that a lot of times. And so if it's black ice, they'll throw the auto chains on. It doesn't even do good. It's it doesn't help it at all. Yeah. Exactly. So auto chains make people brave. They give you a false sense of confidence. And that's one of the main reasons why I'm against it. I don't want to see any of our teams uh, in fatal situations because... They chose to go sure. when they should have stopped. Yeah. So that's the first and the biggest reason. The second thing is much different. Uh, it's the maintenance required. So auto chains, if they're done properly, and I don't know if you did this or not, they're, they're, they're held on by an aluminum plate, and they are actually supposed to be removed and, and put on every year. So in, in springtime, you're supposed to take them off. In, in winter, you're supposed to put them right back on. If you don't, after a few years of use, they actually flex. And then when you go to engage them, they don't engage because they're not hitting the tire. They're not hitting the tire, so they don't work. Um, so they are a maintenance item that has to be done every year, and are, it's already mm, a challenge to get people to do maintenance because sure. that digs right. in their pocket. When the truck's at Speedco, <laughs> guess who ain't making money? Right. Uh, to add on, hey, here's another two shops you have to do every single year. On top of this, is going to put you in a situation where you're not safe. It just doesn't make sense to me. Right. That's why we've that's why we've never done it. Well, that was one reason why we didn't buy auto socks more than once. Um, Melissa and I chained up once going over Vail Pass on our first truck, mm -hmm. and after that we bought auto socks. And when we moved into our next truck, the auto socks didn't fit different different tire different tire size. So we left them in the previous truck and we moved on. And I had somebody ask me one time, you know, what do you think about auto socks? And I said, well, I've never used them. I've owned them but never used them. Yeah. I hear great things about them. I won't buy another pair of auto socks. And they're like, well, really? Why not? I said, because I never intend to use them. Yeah. I have no desire to spend money on something I have no intention of ever using. Doesn't make sense to me. High foot provides me with tire chains. They live in that toolbox. I'm never going to use them either, but they're here. Yeah. I'm not spending that 200 some odd dollars on, on, on auto socks ever again. Well, they can. The chains. You're required yeah. to have them in Colorado right. certain times of year in Washington State and California and sure. a few other places. You're required to have them. You have mm -hmm. to by law. If you're driving a truck right now and it's uh, October through April or uh, Mar March. May in Colorado. Even May in Colorado, okay. yeah. You're required to have them. If you don't have them on the truck and you're running for those states, you're running illegal and they do random inspections and they will give you a ticket for mm -hmm. that. They will. Um, so that's the first thing is you're required to have them. The second thing is it is theoretically possible that you can get on a mountain when the road is clear and open and find yourself in a spot in the middle of winter where right. you do need them. Yes. So it is insurance. Yes. I hope you never have to use that insurance, but it is insurance that you can should you have to. Right. Um, so, and there are times and situations where just shutting it down won't work. If sure. you are on top of the mountain and you are in the middle of it, you may not be able to shut it down. Right. So, I do understand that. That's why we do keep them on the truck. But again, I hope no one ever has to use them unless you're very comfortable with them. I hope no one ever has to use them. Um, but it's what we uh, it's what we do. Yeah. So um, I do want to say real quick. I hate to jump off the subject because it's such a topic. We have to talk about the airplane of the week. We have to. It's contractually obligated it, it to is. Highfield. 
uh, that we talk about the airplane of the week. And the airplane of the week is a Delta Airlines McDonnell Douglas MD-88. These are the Mad wow. Dogs uh, Super 80s. Do they carry tire chains? They don't. Oh. They don't. Uh, but this is a airplane. If you've ever seen a DC-9, a very common airplane back in the day. A lot of people flown them. they got the two engines on the very back of the plane. Right. Um, this is the modern... Um, this is the modern D, uh, DC-9. Uh, well, it was the modern DC-9. So this plane came out in the 80s. Um, it's just a more fuel-efficient version, and it's a lot longer. They actually did a stretch. They put heavier-duty wings on it. Um, it's actually a long airplane. Like, when you look at how many windows going down there, it's, yeah, it, holds, it holds a lot of yeah. people. Um, these were workhorses. American Airlines, Delta, um, United all had these things. They were amazing. This is actually the plane if it was American Airlines, American didn't have a paint job. So this plane's all white. It has Delta on it. American Airlines didn't have anything. It was, still, it was it was all, yeah, polished aluminum. Yeah. And this is actually the airplane that left Eric stranded at Columbus Airport. The uh, generators on the airplane didn't work. And uh, so he ended up getting stranded here and had to get a whole other flight. And it was a, a whole debacle. That was the last time he ever flew American. Uh, over it, it was such a bad deal. But that's this airplane. It's uh, it was a, such a workhorse. Amer uh, Delta Airlines retired this plane mid-pandemic, sadly. Um, and there are no more flying. Period. If you want to fly one, I think you have to go to like the Middle East or Africa. Wow. There's a few places that are still flying over there, but for the most part, they are actually pretty well gone. Uh, they're completely gone out of America. So, um. I actually, this is one of the few times I had a pleasure of flying this airplane on the very last day it flew in America. I flew this airplane out to Minneapolis, and then the plane flew from Minneapolis to Atlanta, and that was its last flight. So wow. I didn't fly it on its last flight. I flew it on its second to last flight on the last day these things were ever uh, put out. And it was a great flight, super comfortable, quiet uh, because the plane is so long and the engines are on the complete back of the airplane, right. yeah. I was up in like row three or four. You could barely hear them. Mm -hmm. It was really quiet. It was a very comfortable flight. It was the old school airplanes with the really thick plush seats. Right. Remember that from back in the day? Back like, in the day, yeah. They had like five or six inches of plushness on them. So it was super, super comfortable. No no in-flight entertainment, no Wi-Fi, none of that, <laughs> none of that stuff. Um, <laughs> but it was extremely comfortable airplane. And... Um, <laughs> I just saw that comment. Sorry, that's what I was laughing Donna. about. <laughs> so this, uh, <laughs> so, uh, Donna just said, uh, Patrick, you figured out how to find your model collection. Add a business expense. I can't comment on that, uh, but maybe. So it's uh, <laughs> that's that's hysterical. So it's um, it was a really cool flight to actually actually fly it on its like send off day. It was really special. I mean, there's, there was literally people flying it just to fly it because this was the last time they were ever going to get a chance. Delta was the last people to, to uh, retire these planes. So this was the last chance people were actually going to get to fly it. I was actually just flying on business. But, um, yeah, it was a great plane. I mean, it, it, it was huge. They sold over a 1,000 of them. I mean, it was... It's like McDonald's. It was like McDonald's. Over a 1,000 served. Billions and billions of people. I don't know about billions, but millions of people flew on this thing. Chances are if you flew... Over the last, uh, if you flew over the last, I'm gonna say 20 years. Yeah, you probably flew you on this. You probably plane. flew on one of these. Right. It, it was very, very common. Right. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I really like it. It was a, uh, it was a memorable experience for me, and I thought I'd share that with y'all. If you want to fly it today, gotta go to Africa Air or the Seneg Middle East. Single, si Senegal. Senegal. Yeah, so, okay. um, maybe Iron might have one. Yeah. I don't know. You never know. We'll talk about that later. Iron. Yeah. Uh, they they find some interesting stuff. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, uh, real quick, are we going to? Is there anything in the Q and A's that we might have missed that we skipped over, moderators? I apologize that we did not get a chance to uh, to um, wrap up with them. Any shout outs? Any things that want to um, be said uh, while the moderators are looking through that and, and giving us a, a, some comments, I did want to say real quick, can we have a few seconds to talk about a, uh, can we have an over the air production meeting? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that real quick. Production All right. Meeting. Real quick over the air production so you, meeting. You folks that are watching, don't listen to this part because it's just between. Actually, no, us. I kind of like this. Let's get their opinions. 
Oh, okay. Well, listen to this. Okay, one. yeah. Opinion, if you're listening, please. we would love to have your feedback. You helped us out before in the lighting situation, uh, and this is another th- question we may have. But um, we have done some uh, interesting uh, analysis, analyst. Yeah, an analysis about sure. about our uh, podcast and about our YouTube and when people watch it the most, all this good stuff. And mm-hmm. Jerry, why don't you explain what we're seeing? So basically from analytics and things that I am watching on a daily basis, um, the majority of people are tuning into our show, uh, our website, and all things The Outer Belt and Highfield uh, on Sundays. Sundays uh, afternoon, evening. Sunday is a huge day for people to really be uh, checking us out on YouTube, podcast, and so forth. So... um, so, with that knowledge, we were, I was kind of thinking, and I mentioned this to Vince, sh- are we doing this wrong, doing this on Saturdays? Should we do our live on Sundays? It kind of makes sense if you ask me, because I know when I was driving, a lo- both our carriers, the weekends are hit or miss if you're going to haul freight. I agree. And if I had a Saturday off, it would be a great opportunity to... Um, go into town, have a nice dinner, sure. hang out, maybe go watch a movie at the theater. Sure. Uh, the last thing I wanted to do maybe was be strapped to my computer. Um, it also feels like if even if you have a load that carries you over the weekend, delivers on Monday morning, chances are you were there Sunday night. Not at, always, but you yes. were there Sunday evening, Sunday afternoon, and you could actually hang out and watch something like this on a Sunday afternoon while you wound down from your day. So our thoughts, uh, dear listeners, is... Move. We're we're thinking about moving our lives, our, our our once a month live to Sunday night instead of Saturday night. Now we, I know we told you all we'd be here once a month on Saturdays, but if it's okay with everybody, we would uh we would really like to try Sundays and see how that goes. Now originally we were not thinking Sundays. Uh, we were originally thinking that we would do Saturdays. That way, honestly, we could have Sunday night to rest right. because it's the last day for the work week. Yada yada yada. But Based on what we're seeing from viewership, based on what we're seeing from all the analytics that Jerry's pulled, you, the audience would rather Sunday night. So if that's what y'all want to do, and I'm already seeing people start to say yes Sunday night, <laughs> uh, we would we would like to try next month. We're going to do it on a Sunday night. I don't have the date in front of me. I should have got that. I, I, I'm sorry. I apologize. We will be releasing that on Facebook, Instagram, uh, and on future podcasts. But uh, we're going to try and do um, Sunday nights. Oh, Dana Lord said until football season. That's a good point. That is a good point. We'll reevaluate at football season, but we still a got a point. few months from that. Well, football season is also college football on Saturdays. It is. Some of us like college football and don't care about NFL. But it's once mm. a month. We can, we can schedule it around USC Abs- football. Yeah, on those dates. <laughs> <laughs> we, it's nothing to me. We could. I mean. Yeah. Roll tide. Anyway, so, uh, (laughs) all right. Well, uh, all in favor of Sunday, say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Not. What? (laughs) (laughs) Wait, we got to recount the votes. We (laughs) We have a hanging chat or something. Something's Um, weird. All right. Well, we will will, uh, go forth with Sunday night starting next month. Look forward to seeing you there. <laughs> Raylene says, I, I love it. Uh, De- uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Donna said, try it on Sunday and then see if everybody watches it on Monday. That's funny. Uh, well, we will definitely, um, we're going to go ahead and go forth with Sunday for our live. Our normal podcast will still drop on Saturday. Yeah. Um, so you still get those three and a half weeks a month. Yeah. And then this will be on Sunday nights. And uh, we'll still for stay now. at 6 p.m. Eastern. Yes, I think 6 p.m. Eastern That's works good. good. Yeah. 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 Yep. So uh, thank you, everybody, for that production meeting. Do we have any shout-outs we needed to reach out to? I saw Jason and uh, Heather uh, showed up. Hey, I have not seen you all forever. I'm not going to out you it's with which ones time. you are, but uh, yeah, it's, been a long time. it's been a long time. Y'all need to come hang out. Do. We used the Traeger tonight. We had a <sighs> we blast. Did use the it was a tonight. lot of fun. Took some um, amazing steaks in the Traeger. I'd love to have y'all come join us in the outer yeah. belt and, and just see what we got going on. Yeah, that'd be good to uh, catch up. And then I saw also the real trucking Road Trucker Couple, they're hoping to come out here. They said, can we get an invite to the live? You always have an always invite to the invite. live. Always. What kind of question is that? Yeah. Um, I'm hoping uh, in a couple months, I'm hoping maybe we can get the Expedite Checks on. Yeah, that'd be great. I do enjoy hanging that'd out with great. the Expedite Checks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we have lots of things coming up. 
Thank you, everybody. Well, we do also have Lakeisha who said hi. Their future uh, Highfield family, Lakeisha and her partner, coming on with us in July. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Hey there. Yeah. Uh, welcome. And um, apparently people are more interested in the XFL game than us. But, apparently uh, they are. Enjoy the XFL. Well, the XFL, uh, and, you know, whatever. Um, I've seen a lot of people talking about the Expo. We haven't mentioned I do see We haven't mentioned the Expo, it. which yeah. is coming up here before our... No, we have another live before the Expo, don't we? We do. Yes. Yeah, we have June's, yeah. Expo, okay. uh, June's, June's Expo live. before the live. You know, what? I really <laughs> do I really do enjoy these lives. I, I would do lives every mo- week if we could. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> hey, hey, that, that would put a big burden off of my shoulders. <laughs> yeah, I, I just got shot with daggers from Patrick. Well, and, and, I mean, like Jerry said, then he wouldn't have anything to do, so and he'd lose his job, and um, that would not be um, good. Um, They're just wait, 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 he does wait, not wait, want wait, to get wait, back. Wait, Jerry, got, Jerry wants to get back on the road. There's plenty to do besides the podcast. You have me working like a slave. I got a, I got a truck uh, for uh, you, Jerry. I don't think we use that term. Like a dog. Anymore. But anyways, okay. I, I got a truck for you. No, you yeah. don't. <laughs> <laughs> the expert outer boogie is retired. Oh, okay. Uh, the right. real truck couple says go live at the expo. So we are going to be at expo. Uh, we are going to have expedite chicks there. Uh, Look, our expediting adventures. Uh, fun with expedite boogie. Um, uh, the, the real trucker couple. Hopefully, you'll be there. You're the one suggesting yeah, we go exactly. there. Uh, we're hoping exactly. you're going to be there. Uh, Nick and Carla, who are getting into a truck very soon, very uh, soon. back on the road again. Monday, I, I, Monday I think morning. They're uh, possibly going to make it. We're hoping. Uh, and same with truck and travel. They are in the talks about going. So we're going to see if that will work out or not. Um, we are going. If you were here last year at the Expo, Expo last year, you saw we had a little studio set up. We were putting that back up again this year. Yeah. So we do definitely plan on doing some uh, podcast. Whether or not we'll be live, I don't know. It's kind of tricky because the it internet is. there's not, not the, the best in the world. Yeah. Uh, but we will be recording some content that'll show up uh, the next week, and um, it is a it's a lot of fun. Uh, and if you are interested, in, hey, I want to give a shout out or I want to be on someone's podcast, reach out to your favorite uh, YouTube channel or podcast about that, and uh, we'll see if we can't make that happen. Um, then, uh, but what is Expedite Expo and where is it at? Expedite Expo is July 21st and 22nd. Of? July 21st and 22nd. What year? 2023. <laughs> the year of our Lord, 2023. Two yes. Right, yes. Yes. Uh, it's not 20,000, is it? It's, it's not 20,000. That's, that's, Ooh, watch out. That's a bit of a... T- uh, <laughs> it is in Fort Wayne, Indiana at the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum. Yes, that's the one. Yeah, a parking um, for trucks uh, at the Allen County War, War Memorial Coliseum is $16 a day. However, if you pull in on a Friday and you don't leave till Saturday, you are only paying the $16 once they are not charging you again. Uh, and that is not just a secret. It's actually on their website that they will not do that for you. Yes. Uh, if you're bringing a car, it is $8 a day. Um, lots of fun to be had there as well. Yes. We, there's going to be a lot of breakout sessions. You can actually go and uh, in the mornings and hear people talk about various topics. Millennials and Trucking will be there talking about what it's like to be a millennial in trucking. Very clever. Uh, <laughs> and there'll, be, there'll be a bunch more. Uh, the, the, the list is on the website. You can actually go online and kind of get an idea of which uh, talks you want to be a part of. Uh, so you can make your plans there to take the most of the time. It is a Quick two days. It is. Um, there's uh, the shows open yeah. about four hours, four or five hours each day, and uh, then the breakouts before and after um, are a lot of fun. S- Friday night is Casino Night, and of course we are going to be sponsoring Casino Night and After Party again this year, as we've done in years past. Um, and uh, it's a lot of fun for that event. It's 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 one of my favorite things. I mean, they bring all the uh, craps table the uh, poker Black table, Jack, blackjack, roulette, roulette you know. all that stuff out. They give you a thousand dollars monopoly money, and uh, there's a bunch of tables for people that don't really care about gambling, um, fake money, and hanging out. It's always a good time. There isn't a cash bar there as well, so you can get some drinks and just uh, let loose for a little bit. It's a fun time. It's also uh, one thing I always tell people is when it comes to these trade shows, you can get a little business done at the actual show. And and talking like on the floor of the uh, convention center, but these after parties, these um, side things, that's where the magic happens. That's where you're able to uh, hang out with other people in the industry and 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 get deals made and, and really like um, get to know each other. It's it's uh, something that I think is very um, 
important and it's it, it's a lot of fun, but it's also a good time to explore making your business better. Certainly, is a good time to 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 uh, network with people. Absolutely, um, just just talk to people that you may have heard from or talked to over the road for years and never been able to meet in person with them. It might be a good time to to do that as well. Absolutely, and then meet with other people in the industry that. You know, maybe you're intimidated to go talk to them at sure. the, sh- at the uh, on the floor, or, or they they gave a uh, uh, a talk uh, at one of the lectures and or in the breakout sessions, and you were nervous to talk to them. You know, you find them on the floor, um, just ready to, or at the casino night, just ready to have uh, a little fun. It's a lot easier to approach people at that point. It really is, and uh, or even even in the squircle, we're getting questions about who's welcome in the squircle. Oh, I forgot about the squircle. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the square coal is uh, every year at Expo Highfield rallies the truck and we build a square coal, which is we just put a bunch of trucks end to end and make a square with a big open area in the middle. And and we have a parking lot party. Uh, the parking lot party is weather dependent. So if the weather does not participate, it won't happen. But if it does even a little bit, uh, then we go for it. Yeah. And uh, we, you know, have... I know Highfield usually provides a uh, cooler full of beer and sodas, and we have uh, cornhole and uh, DJ playing yeah. and uh, some pop-up tents in case it does start raining on us. Um, and we, uh, <laughs> Donna says it likes Fight Club. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's just a fun time to hang out. The show's over. It's Saturday night, so the show will be over, and it's a chance for us to decompress, have a little fun, hang out, and uh, just enjoy each other's company before uh, work comes the next week. So uh, we encourage people to come out and hang out with us. It's a lot of fun. It is open to everybody. We don't, we're like Highfield's a family and we love our Highfield family, but we do open up to everybody in the industry. Um, come hang out, get to know us. We have fleet owners there every year. Yep. Um, Donna was there a couple, of, was it last year? Uh, recruiting for her fleet. <laughs> 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 I mean, like, it's a, uh, it's 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 a, it's a lot of fun. We and and we don't um, and we don't try to uh, discriminate, discriminate no, or whatever. You're, everyone's welcome. Yeah, and so it's the spirit of the expo. It's one of the things I love about the show is we are all there, all in this small industry, hanging out. It doesn't matter who you drive for, what carrier. Uh, we all kind of have this brotherhood or sisterhood, sure. and it's it's a lot of fun. So sure. we encourage you to come out if you want to uh, hang out with us, get to know us a little better. And uh, we look forward to seeing you there. Uh, I am out of content. Well, then it might be time to uh, <laughs> go ahead and, and, and sign off and say good night to everybody. If you haven't already, if you do us a favor, hit that like button. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, if you don't like it, hit the dislike button. I, you know, wh- whichever one works for you best. Um, we appreciate you all coming out and spending the, your, your evening with us on a Saturday um, it's a lot of fun for me to be here and do this with you guys, just to kind of sit here and shoot the breeze and have a great time on a Saturday night. Um, look for us at the Outer Belt Podcast on I don't uh, usually do on these Instagram, plus, so you guys do. on Thank Facebook. You. Thank you, you very much. If you have anything you'd like us to talk about, you can feel free to reach out to us at the Outer the Outer Belt Podcast <laughs> at gmail dot com. Uh, let us know anything you want us to talk about. Any. Uh, talking points that we need to mention. Yeah. I know we talked a couple of months ago about putting out a uh, thing on business models. I'm working we're, on it. We're working on it. Uh, by I mean, I'm working on it. I mean, I'm procrastinating, but <laughs> I, I promise you it's on the list of things that I hope to accomplish. Um, we have so much stuff coming up over the next few months that I'm just, I'm so excited about. Uh, and I just thank y'all for uh, being here to spend time with us. The lives are nerve-wracking because they, they are. are live, but they are so much fun. I always leave here feeling uh, really good, and I, I just thank everybody for being a part of that, supporting us. Um, please feel free to like and share. If you think this is good, uh, you can throw it up on your Facebook and re- uh, share it with your family and friends. Sure. Uh, I think we highlight a division of trucking that most people don't know exist, and um, it's, uh, it's a really great industry that I think people – would love to be a part of. They just maybe don't even know about it yet. So, um, that being said, thank y'all for hanging out with us. Please drive safe and make good decisions. Enjoy the rest of your evening and don't leave money on the table. And keep those wheels a turning.
Good night.